Cashing in on cannabis in Colorado. Nearly 200 investors gathering in Denver today to hear pitches from marijuana startups looking to get in on the green rush. Our Josh Lipton is there. Morning, Josh. Morning, Carl. Yeah, we're here at the Arcview Group's Investor Summit in Denver, where they are expecting a big crowd here today. Now, why? all the excitement. Well, it's because industry sources estimate that this $1.5 billion legal marijuana market, that could actually quadruple by 2018. So investors, they're gathering here today because they want to talk to startups who are looking to make money in this budding industry. And we're going to be here talking to ArcView investors throughout the day here in Denver. So stay tuned. A lot of people are looking for ways to make some money in it, invest in the pot business. I've got a guest with me today who's going to tell us how you do that. How do you invest in legal pot? His name is Troy Dayton. Mark Twain had a great quote. He said, when there's a gold rush on, it's a good time to be in the pick and shovel business. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what's happening right now with the cannabis industry. When you invest in marijuana, you're investing in America. And to show us that he's just the beginning of this new, unlikely breed of gondrepreneurs, Trip took us to Arcview, a conference of venture capitalists in the marijuana industry, attended not only by businessmen, but also by US lawmakers. So many fellow senators and representatives have come up to me and said, you know, I'm absolutely with you. I mean, obviously I can't vote with you and I will have to issue a press release condemning you, but... <laughs> But at the end of the day, if we're successful, you'll see 50 of us here next year. I'm now going to explain to you what we plan to do over the next two to five years, building what I'm calling the Berkshire Hathaway of the cannabis industry. We're using cutting edge chemistry to solve the confusion and consistency problem. Our goal is to be the digital hub for the cannabis community. Social networking, that's what we're looking to facilitate with Mass Roots. <laughs> This weekend, those behind a new wave of pot-related tech startups are meeting at a conference in Denver. One investment group here is only focusing on pot-related startups and has already shelled out more than $12 million. It predicts the budding industry will grow to more than $10 billion by 2018. With marijuana now legal in two states, investment in legal pot is skyrocketing. Our next guest helps people to invest in the pot business. Now he says there's money to be made, big money. In fact, some people are willing to put up $50,000 and try to cash in. So here to tell us, Troy Dayton, CEO of, of the ArcView Group. What are you telling people? What's your sales pitch to get people to, to invest as much as 50,000? Well, I, it's, there's no sales pitch. People are knocking down my door. Are people envisioning themselves as sort of, okay, we're going to replace the drug dealer, and we know that guy always drove a Mercedes-Benz. That will be me. <laughs> but how does, how does it actually work? Well, I think for, for most investors, it's, it's just like any other early industry. The real plays are in private companies um, who are just getting started, or early stage or seed stage companies that are looking to raise 250000 or a million dollars. So what we have is sort of like a Shark Tank. You know the show Shark Tank? Sure. Right? So we have these investors, the companies come and they pitch, and they're all over the place in terms of all the different ways that people are getting involved in this industry. Startup businesses and their financial backers are scrambling to get in on the ground floor of a newly legitimate industry. Troy Dayton is co-founder of Arcview Investors, which vets and funds cannabis entrepreneurs. Just a year ago, Dayton noted, We had 40 people in a conference room. And now we have over 200 people out there today. The last few months, the interest level from investors has been astounding. Fortunes seem to beckon to those who place the right bets early enough, just as with computers and the internet, where investors like these made their own first scores. This really does resemble the IT industry and the computer industry in the 1980s. I was an investment banker who focused, focused exclusively on the internet and new media in the late 90s and, and mid-90s, and this is a bigger opportunity than that even was. One of the things you, I learned from doing Zynga is that you can tell when something like an industry is going to be big. What do your billionaire, entrepreneur, high-tech friends think about you in the uh, marijuana industry? They think this is the best idea I've ever had. The cannabis culture has, of course, evolved. In fact, thanks to recent laws legalizing marijuana in Colorado and Washington, there are now as many yuppies as hippies signing up to get a piece of the pot pie. The latest issue 
of Fortune magazine takes a look at the big business of marijuana, including a network that links weed-related startups with investors. I'm joined now by Lee Gallagher, the assistant managing editor of Fortune. Lee, thanks for joining us. Tons of uh, entrepreneurs, investors, really thinking that this this industry and everything around it could really be the next big growth industry. And Lee, you, your article also mentions this uh, network that links up marijuana startups with investors, but, but you write that this is not just a bunch of potheads sitting around sharing ideas. Who are these people? No, that's what's most interesting, and that's what shows you that this is really an industry that people have high hopes on. Um, this, this is a this company called ArcView basically brings entrepreneurs into a room with potential investors and lets them pitch, um, kind of give their elevator pitch, and then the entrepreneurs can, can meet with the investors and, and do deals of whatever kind they want. But the kinds of investors that are coming to, this, um, to these meetings are basically, you know, people that, you know, there's a retired Navy pilot who has no interest in marijuana, has never smoked in his life, and he's just interested in a way to make money. You have um, heirs to the Pritzker fortune. Uh, you have people that just from all kinds. And, and on the entrepreneur side, you have, you know, just like you would see in Silicon Valley, you have entrepreneurs who um, just have innovative new techn technologies that they think will be the next big thing. And in fact, one of the investors sold a startup to a big high-tech company in the valley and he's now looking for a place to put that money so it's it's almost what you would see in any new industry the, in terms of the flurry of activity around there it's not it's not Jeff Spicoli's <laughs> <laughs> that's too bad I like Jeff Spicoli I know so do I uh, Lee Gallagher <laughs> from for Fortune magazine thanks so much welcome to the new legal cannabis industry Doctors, veterans, politicians, and activists all descended on Sin City to gamble on the marijuana industry. Navy veteran Jim Willette never thought he'd find himself down this road. I was a lieutenant, and one of our missions uh, was drug interdiction, looking for the motherships delivering bales of marijuana to the coast. Willette came across an article in his local paper that mentioned ArcView an investment and research firm that pairs businesses and investors in the cannabis industry. And now he's a proud member of this angel investor group. Republican New York Assemblyman Steve Katz also did an about face. I knew a year ago that I wanted my final opus in life to be creating jobs. The marijuana industry is the next great industry to emerge. There's a geyser going off right now and everybody's trying to figure out who's going to sit on top of it as it shoots off. The business of pot is growing. In fact, it may reach three billion dollars in sales this year. Trey Dayton with us now. He is the CEO and co-founder of the ArcView Group. It's a national cannabis investment and research firm. Any investor that's investing in this sector right now has made the bet that legalization is on the way for many, many more states and many more countries. They're betting they can see the political winds uh, where they're going. It's becoming increasingly politically unpopular uh, for uh, uh, elected officials to uh, oppose uh, legalization and uh, the public's behind them. And I think a lot of investors, um, it's partly about uh, being, you know, partly about money, but it's also for a lot of people, it's an impact investment. They believe in the freedom uh, and they believe in changing the laws and they want to put their money uh, in a place that's going to help have the kind of impact on the world that they want so they can be, be part of what uh, a lot of people are calling the next great American industry.